Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another recap of All American Homecoming episode 14. Stand for something. Let's just say this episode was a lot. It was a lot going on. But I enjoyed it though. So it starts off with Simone after she posted that video of them being um targeted. And racial profiling. She's looking at the video, reading the comments, and she see a lot of negativity. And she feels as if nobody is doing nothing to like help bring awareness to what happened to them and bring those cops accountable for their actions because nobody deserves to go through that. Like nobody would truly understand what you're going through unless they've been through it themselves. So nobody wants to be racial profile, especially just trying to go play tennis, like, yeah, so, after that, she decided that she was gonna go do something about it, so she ended up going to the common hall, I guess, and she sees Nate there on his computer doing something, and next, you know, Lando and and Damon pull up like, what? She got two of her boos. <laughs> like, <laughs> Simone, she got it like that. But still, they go there to help lend her some support because, you know, she's still going through it. Like, it's been, what, a day or two, I guess, for them? But, or a week? Yeah, it's been a week. So she's still reeling from it, and she's still, like, affected. And everybody's trying to do their best to help her and the girls overcome that. So they find ways to distract her. Keisha's out of town trying to find ways to get Dr. Pace kicked out of the school. So yeah, them two's going back and forth, giving advice on what they should do. And they also suggested that about, I think some type of dance or activity that they should do to like kind of get her mind off of that situation. So um Damon reached out and said that maybe he could get his mom to, you know, speak to her to, you know, lend a helping hand because, you know, she works with so many organizations, so that's fine with her. And when he said that, Lando sensed that he was like, yeah, but I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just keeping my mouth shut or whatever. So after that, she walks off and then Lando goes behind her. And Damon still standing there with Nate. And Nate was like, so, uh, thank you for that. I know she still owe you a conversation. And he was like, yeah, I understand, but I ain't going to wait forever. Some things are bigger than my own personal feelings. So, that was just happens to be one of them. So, yeah. So, she, her and Lando are walking, I guess, back to her dorm. And he was like, I got something that can help get your mind off of it. A chill day, movies, popcorn, me and you under that blanket that you love so much. And she was like, oh, yeah, that'd be perfect. So then they go on about their day. Um, and then um, Damon goes to the, he, by that time, he already changed his clothes. And he goes to meet up with the coach in the locker room. And he had a, oh, he had an interview. And he's basically MLB's prospect. So basically, he's the one, he has this, the target on his back of being the one to, like, help get Brinkston on the map. Because if he would never apply to the school or whatever the case would be, nobody really would know what, what Brinkston has to offer. So he's dealing with a lot of pressure of that. And then the teammates and then the other team to, for the championship so it was like he did his interview. He quoted something his dad said, always said to him and it stuck with him. And that was that. So after that interview, he goes to the coach's office. And the coach said, I have a gift for you. He ended up giving him his old um, baseball glove that he won his championship but when he was at Brinkston. And he was like, oh, this is a perfect fit. Oh, you're never getting this back. So he just wanted to help alleviate some of the pressure that he's feeling because, you know, that's a lot for just one person to carry. Like, you can't carry the weight of everybody on your shoulders. So, um, Coach Turner gave him some words of encouragement and stuff like that. So, he decided to take that 
and you know leave with it um so the boys have getting ready for their championship game against um eastville um university which is another hbcu the smaller version and excuse me so they all decided to meet up and talk about how to you know get the pressure off their back and damon held this little speech and everybody was like yes we are one together all of our strengths together will become as one so we can play this out on the field so everybody was like, okay, yeah, we're ready for that. Then it just so happens, as they're about to practice, JR had something that involved the KEK. Cam came to the locker room and was like, listen, some of the boys is missing. And we was, um, did into this other things and I had to walk home, stuff like that. So, uh, JR was like, he's kind of torn because he now he has the, the practice for the game. And then he also got the KEK brothers that, you know, that's both home to him so he was like okay i got three hours of the game let's go find this person and let's go see what's up so basically cam and jr they you know leave but before he left jr cam not cam damon was like listen we gotta practice for the game and he was like yeah i know but i will be back so he gets to the kek house and jr starts asking all these questions and then he came across, across Julian. He roughed him up a little bit, but then he let his arms go. Then one of the other guys from the older version of the KEK house so was like, listen, we doing some initiations differently. So then JR got him like, listen, I got this. I'm going to handle this. Cam was like, yeah, you better handle this because once I cross over, I'm going to find him and I'm going to beat their behinds. Like, he wasn't playing. So that he was trying to do that, but he ended up making it back just in time because at that same instance, Damon had called him and he didn't answer. And then just so happens, Coach Coach Turner came in and was like, "Where's Jr?" He was like, "I don't know." And basically, Damon didn't want to say nothing to the Coach Turner. He was like, "Yeah, that's fine, but you know, some things you just gotta handle, whatever." Before he could say anything, he had to say. JR came in and then it was time for the practice time for that they practice their game um moving back along to Simone so they're all inside the hmm, what would I call this the mess hall yeah we're gonna say the mess hall because I really don't know what they call that white area that they be in the cafeteria the mess hall the real mess hall yeah so there's um Simone there's helping Nate with his campaign election and one of the reporters for the newspaper comes up and was like listen we had this interview and Nate was like yeah I know I called to reschedule he was like well I don't do reschedules he was like well you have my contact information so you know when you see fit you know give me a call I have other things to do and Simone was like, nah, you shouldn't do that because you know the election is big to you. But he was, but Nate was like, yeah, but some things are bigger than that, and my priorities is like set forth differently. So Simone was like, okay. As she was leaving, Thea comes up, and they found that Thea is now pro, so they mad about that situation. And Tootie and the other girl from the team, they're making up these signs for the, for Brinkston about what happened and stuff like that. And just to have Bastia comes and they was like, oh, you're not a part of this no more, so you can go. So Simone ends up leaving with the rest of the girls. And they was like, listen, why did you why did you think that would be best uh, see fit to come now? She was like, yeah, I know. And basically they gave her some advice to do something to come big and come harder. So that they can get, she can get the girls' approvals or whatever. Safe to be. So after that, they both went their separate ways. Then what else happened? Oh, game time! So the game, the girl, the boys are out playing the game. Oh no! Before that, the game. Um, Simone found another way to like get more exposure about what happened. She wanted to host a rally. And 
the aunt, she went to the aunt's office and then she said what she said and the aunt was like, yeah, I got your back 100%. Then one of the assistants from the office, Ms. Robert Burnett, was like, listen, I, I don't feel as if this is the right place for this. This is a learning institution. But to Dr. P was like, listen, sometimes learning can happen outside the school. So yeah, that Ms. Rob Ms. Ms. Robinson, Bruce Robinette was not feeling it, so whatever. And when she left off, the Dr. P rolled her. I was like, oh, this woman. But anyways, they went on to that. So now we're at the game. Simone's there with everybody else. And the they're pitching or whatever the case may be. Doing a good job so far. Not as well, but you know. Doc, Dr. P comes to the, the game and she sees Simone in a rally. And... She told her, like, listen, um, the athletic conference, the GAU athletic conference wants, um, you to, y'all can still play in the conference, but at the same time, y'all have to cancel the rally. So they end up giving Simone and the girls some non disclosures. So basically, in order to play, they can't, you know, speak on what happened to him at the rally or do anything about it and dr p told her like listen you should go talk to the girls so that way you have a unanimous and full full vote on what to do so now simone had to take that into consideration so now she's thinking about that so to get to get the so the game is still going with the boys and they're doing well. But when it came time to JR to pitch, he basically was fumbling and stuff like that. He, you could tell he was off. That KEK stuff was really getting to him. So after he did his pitchings and whatnot, he went to sat down. He threw his his helmet and his bat and whatever. It was like, oh, I can't do this. So Damon went over there to talk to him. Like, listen, the stuff between you and baseball and the KEK stuff, like, you got to get that together. You are a fighter. Like, you fought through you helped to get here. You fought through for the baseball to get here. You fought to be in a KEK. Like, listen, you're a fighter. Don't give up now. And basically, JR was like, yeah, I know. I got to do what I got to do and stop embarrassing myself. And he was like, yeah, I know. We're family. And oh, you f and you fought to um, find me and then stop till you did. And, you know, we're family, so stop embarrassing me too. So he finally got together. They started doing good. Then when it came time... For Damon to pitch, that guy Trevor came up to the bat and he started like basically thinking of thinking about all the stuff that Trevor had said to them when they had that party. Next thing you know, Damon decides to throw that curveball that he was talking about, and it ended up costing them the game. So basically, Trevor used that to his advantage and psyched him out, got into his head. And Damon felt some type of way. So after that, he walked off and was not to be able to see him, see him for a minute. Next thing you know, he's in his dorm room. And Coach trying to come to check on him. He was like, listen, what happened? Oh, sorry. Um, Coach trying to came to check on him and see what happened. And Damon was like, yeah, we lost. But yeah, but you know, you, you can't beat yourself up about that. But let's go. Some things... We got to do as a team. So he ends up going into the lounge area where they, all the people be, all the kids be at. And they got foosball table up, pizza and everything, music. Everybody's just having a good time. And then he realized, he was like, listen, when we win together and sometimes we lose together, yeah, we are a team. We're brothers. We're family. So that's just what we got to do. They all hugged it out and was grateful for the opportunity because with, with that, they came from a scandal to no program, to a program, to this other situation, to the bomb threat, all this stuff, they came together as a team. So, you know, might as well, you know, take this loss as a team. So Coach Marcus also said, was like, listen, we learn from this experience and we regroup and we try again next year. So that was good. Got some stuff off his back. Also, Damon and Lando decided to talk. He basically let it known that, you know, Sabone, she, he has feelings for Simone and that, you know, he noticed how Lando and Simone has um, something going on. So that was that. So, yeah. 
Oh, because I forgot to tell y'all, before they started practicing, Simone was on the phone call with Lando, and Lando was giving her some advice on what she should do to help with her rally. And Damon was actually outside overhearing their conversation, so he already know that Simone and Lando had something going on. Yeah, I just wanted to put that out there before I forget. So, yeah, after that, Lando was like, cool, I understand. So, later on that day, Lando decides to go oh, go to... No, I'm skipping ahead. My bad. <laughs> Nate and the reporter decide to talk it out. And Nate dis disclosed how she feels about the whole rally situation. Did you watch the video? And she gave her two cents on it. And then the reporter was like, well, do you care to repeat that on camera this time? And she was like, yeah, sure. So now the girls held their rally. And... Thea, with the help of her her uh her opponent, had a friend named Coco Graf decide to come to the school and send send her love and support and speak up on the issues that really happened. So they held their press press conference and everybody said their piece, even Coco said her piece, and everybody was happy and congratulated them because it's like why you repeat the cycle of this police brutality and nothing's being done. So stand up for what you believe in and speak your truth. That's the only way to be heard and to be seen. So after that was done, everybody congratulated Thea because that was a big one. She did her big one. Good job, Thea. Um, um, Coach P, not Coach P, <laughs> Dr. P was like, that was good. Everybody... Um, enjoyed this. One of the board chair members was like, yes, this is good. We're going to back out behind this. And also got the attention from the um, after the conference. And yeah, then they're going to try to put some pressure behind what the cops did and stuff like that to bring more awareness to that. Everybody was happy. That was a good turnout. Coco was glad that, you know, she would be able to be a part of something like that because she was a professional tennis player. And nobody likes to go through that. So, yeah. That was good. Um, Thea also apologized to Thea. Not Thea. Thea also apologized to Simone and the girls for not being truthful about her ways. Like, she apologized for, like, going pro and not telling them about it. And it's just up and leaving. Yeah, so that was that. And then Simone was like, yeah, at one point, I just wanted you to leave. <laughs> and they was like, yeah. So now Simone is queen of the court, which is always Thea's position. Now that she's Thea, but in a more better way, everything is cool. I guess Thea goes back to going pro. And yeah, so now Simone's back in her dorm room. And she's looking at the videos and comments and stuff like that. She gets a knock on the door, happens to be Lando. Lando tells her, like, listen, what are we? Do we have good, do we have fun when we're together? Yeah. Do we feel like things are uncomplicated? She was like, yeah. So I understand I'm not the only offer on the table. So whatever you decide, just know. I want to be more than friends with benefits. So now she got this added pressure between two guys that she like, and they're both on the same team. Like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I really hope not for nothing. She chooses Lando because I understand Damon and her have history from a while ago. They're like, what, three years in of history? But still, Lando is something new and refreshing. And she doesn't feel as if it's complicated or she's like, it's not the right time. They basically just going at their own pace and, you know, filling each other out, which I totally understand. And I really hope that she does pick Lando, but then again, at the same time, Dame is not going to wait forever, so yeah. Because if that was the case, you would have told her how she felt, even though she was going through her breakup with Jordan before getting with Thea. So, but then again, I understand how everything falls into place, but then again, you don't want to miss your mark and your moment for something you should have said before instead of later. So, now Simone got this added pressure of what to do. Yeah, I believe this is everything that happened in this episode. I can't believe next week is the season finale. Can y'all believe it? The season finale? Me, I can't. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this recap. I think I got recovered everything that happened so far in this episode. But anyways, if I didn't, let me know in the comments down below. 
And I can't wait to see y'all the next next week. So with that being said, give me a like. And I'll see you at the next one. Bye.